I get it. You're looking to buy a house and you're looking to see what's out there and you come across new builds or new construction homes and they're beautiful, right? They got the new finishes, they have all the updates, everything that you're looking for in a home, but you've never bought a new build before or you're considering moving to Chattanooga and you're looking at new builds. In today's video, we're gonna dis discuss the pros and cons of new builds and also if you stick towards the end, we're gonna discuss the prices of new builds. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Living in Chattanooga, Tennessee. My name is Junior Francica and I'm a real estate agent here in Chattanooga. Now, I love making these videos and I love giving you as much value as possible. That's why I make these videos to get you informed, to make a good decision on whether you're gonna move to Chattanooga and if you do, where it is that you wanna move to. Uh, what I love more though is uh, speaking to you guys so feel free to reach out to me if you're looking to move to Chattanooga uh, give me a call uh, shoot me a text or shoot me a message on social media I absolutely love working with you guys and I love helping you move here I've helped so many different people from all over the country and I just love doing it that's my passion so feel free to reach out to the number on your screen with that being said let's get into today's video Like I mentioned on the intro, stick around for the end so that we can talk about the prices and also the biggest con of new builds I'm gonna discuss at the very end. So let's start off with a pro. Uh, one of the biggest pros, especially if you're moving here from a different state or different city, is kind of the timing that we can put uh, with uh, new builds. So what I mean by that is, let's say you live in Florida or Texas or California, anywhere, and you're looking to move here in about six months time. Uh, what we can do is we if you visit here or even if you don't visit here we can actually get under contract with a house that's going to be ready in the time frame that you're looking to move here so it is currently december of 2022 so let's say you're going to move here in june of 2023 we can actually look for houses now um, that are going to be completed in june of 2023 right so Oftentimes, a lot of builders have model homes and have other homes that are already completed. So we can actually tour um, probably the same exact house today or see it today virtually, but still get under contract for the house that's going to be built in June or six months or whatever time frame in the future that you're going to be purchasing. Now, what that does is, in my experience, a lot of the times when people are moving here from other places, there's so much stress and anxiety because you have to time it perfect. You either have to sell your house or you have to move here, stay in a uh, Airbnb or extended stay hotel and try to find a house. And there's so much stress and anxiety because one, you're moving across the country or to a different state. And two, you have to get here and still find something, right? Now, if you have a family or pets or anything like that, it just adds to it. So this is a great way to take out a lot of the stress and anxiety with the new build because you can actually time it um, to where the new build, new build is going to be completed at the same time that you're planning to come here, right? So that's a great way to line up the timelines and take a little bit of stress off of your shoulders. Now, with that being said, one of the cons that you will have with a new build is that sometimes it can be pushed back a little bit. Maybe a year or two ago when kind of the market was really crazy and people were buying houses left and right, builders didn't have any inventory because people were still buying, buying, buying. Um, things could easily be pushed back a week or two. Now, I think the the longest something has been pushed back is three weeks with any of my clients, but that was a long time ago. Uh, lately and recently, builders are a lot more motivated to get the houses closed because the market has closed, uh, has slowed down a little bit. So for the most part, um, new builds can be pushed back. And what I mean is if we're set to close on, you know, let's say June 1st, um, and it's about May 15 or May 20, they will actually let us know, hey, uh, we've had a delay in shipment or we're not able to paint or do this or do that. Uh, we actually have to get somebody out there and it's gonna push back closing by five days or six days or three days. Um, in those cases, we can always get a hotel room. We can always work with the builder. I can put pressure on them to close faster. Um, we can work around that problem, but just know that sometimes it can be pushed back a week or two, but for the most part, you can still generally get an idea of when you will close for the new build.
Another pro for new builds is that it's a great place to move to if you're still not 100% sure in the area that you want to move to. Uh, what I mean by that is that when you're moving to a new city, you, even if you visit and you've done all your research, there's so many different places that are great for you to live. Some places might have more of an appeal to you than others. and like most people, sometimes we make decisions and then we want to move again in three to five years. So a new build uh, gives you the opportunity to have a nice home in a nice community, in a nice subdivision, um, and still live in a nice area that you really like, but you're not super stuck in a house for 30 years like most people think they're gonna buy a house and they're gonna be there for 30 years. A new build is a great way to get into a nice up and coming area that has a lot of things to offer, but at the same time, new builds um, gives you the flexibility to win you know, maybe you're there for two years and you're like, you know what, I moved to Udua and I really like Hickson or I moved to Hickson and I really like Udua. You can still sell that new build and kind of find your way to different areas that appeal to you more after you're already here. Another con that we're going to discuss is HOAs uh, or homeowners associations. Now, I get this question all the time or not really a question, but I get this uh, statement all the time. I do not want HOAs at all. Don't even show me a house that has an HOA. Mainly or typically that's people from either Florida or California, maybe some people from Arizona. And that's typically because HOAs are super, super stringent or they have a lot of laws and regulations. You have uh, nosy neighbors that report you and if you don't follow it exactly to the T, um, you're going to get in trouble. Now, yes, we have laws, um, covenants and restrictions here in our HOAs as well. But one thing that I will say is for the most part in general, it's not as strict as other places. Um, you know, you can still put fences, you can still do a lot of things and have a lot of flexibility. But for the most part, the HOAs there um, are typically to keep everything clean. Uh, you just can't paint your house like pink or purple. And for the most part, they're very inexpensive as well. So even though we have HOAs, I know some places it's crazy, three, five, eight, a thousand dollars a month in different states, but here it's typically anywhere from a hundred to two hundred dollars um, either every six months or a year. And what that money does is it goes to just fixing up the um entrance with flowers and stuff like that so for the most part it's not very invasive of an hoa as you would find in different states but it's still a con for you to know that you will still have some rules or restrictions in the uh, new build subdivisions that you live in pro that we're going to discuss for new builds is that um, they're all updated obviously right everything's new and what I mean by that is if you look or if you're moving here from a different state or different city and you're looking for an older home um, sometimes you'll buy a house that yes we do inspections we have everything done but maybe the water heater is gonna you know go out in a couple years or the HVAC system is gonna not last for another eight to ten years the good thing about new builds is is that everything is new, right? Obviously. And with everything being new, you know that for at least five to 10 years minimum, you're not going to have to fix anything. Um, so you'll have obviously a new roof, a new HVAC system, a new hot water heat, appliances, all these things. So it gives you the peace of mind for at the very minimum, I would say eight to 10 years, you're not going to have any issues. Um, and also in the state of Tennessee, builders are required to give a one year warranty um, on the new build or the house that they built for you guys. Of course, different builders have uh, supplemental warranties or have different things that they offer. But for the most part, it's required to at least have one year warranty on new builds here in Tennessee. So if you're moving here from a different state and you don't want to bother with older homes that will need fixes or updating, um, new builds is a great option for you because everything's updated and some new builds we can actually even get in there if we get in early enough you can pick out the finishes you can pick out the colors you can update and upgrade um, items in the house or if you don't want to deal with all that you can essentially just pick a spec home that already comes all 
picked out for you from the builder. Another pro, which could be a con for some, um, is that we can get under contract for a new build, sometimes as little as five to 10,000 or 1% of the purchase price. So let's say it's a $500,000 new build, 1% is $5,000. Why is that a pro? Um, that's a pro because let's say you visited and you say, hey Junior, I love this new build. I wanna hold it because it fits the perfect timeline of when we're moving here. Great, all we need to do is just put 1% one, uh, 1 down typically for that new build and it's typically held for us from the builder. Um, and with that, there typically isn't a lot of haggling with the builder, uh, which can be a pro and con because if it's listed for $500,000, um, typically that's what you have to offer. Now, what I will say is in today's market in Chattanooga, there is a little bit of flexibility with the builders just because inventory is staying a little bit longer in the market and builders are giving a little bit more deals. Um, depending on the builder, some builders will give you um, flexibility in the price or other builders will give you just closing costs or they'll help you with a new appliance or they'll help you with certain things or certain incentives that they are specifically given. Just to give you an example, I helped somebody buy a house in a new build house in Cleveland and the builder actually gave them $8,000 in closing costs um, and gave them a couple of appliances as well. So different builders will give you incentives but for the most part, all you need to do is put 1% down. And that's awesome because, you know, 1% down of whatever the price point is, is not that much money. Now let's go into the con um, of putting that percentage down. With new builds, for the most part, that 1% down is non-refundable. So if you put $5,000 down on a $500,000 house and, you know, three, four months down the line, you say, you know what, I don't want this house anymore, I wanna back out, that deposit or that earnest money deposit is non-refundable. Now, have there been cases to where, you know, you're not moving to the city anymore, or, you know, something happens in your family and you're not able to purchase that house anymore? I have been able to get the, that earnest money down uh, back for my buyers, but at the same time, if it's just like, I, I just don't want this house anymore, for whatever reason and you just wanna back out for no legitimate reason, you can't get that earnest money down. So it is a con that you more than likely will lose your earnest money and that's something to take into account, but you just 1% down holds that house for you and it's very easy to get under contract with new builds. The biggest con for new builds. Are you ready? Drum roll. The lot size. The lot size is probably the biggest con for 99% of people. If somebody reaches out to me and they, they say, hey, I love new builds. I want a new build, but I have to have half an acre. I will typically ask them this. Great. Thank you for that information. Now, what is more important to you? A new build or half an acre? because more than likely we're not gonna get both of those, right? Uh, for the most part, I think the biggest lot um, I've seen for new builds, now, of course you have one-offs that have half an acre or one-offs that does have one or two acres. Typically the price point is a lot higher, but generally speaking, what I will see is that the biggest lot side is, is 0.3 of an acre, but that's still stretching it. Uh, typically it's anywhere from 0.15 to 0.20 or a quarter of an acre is what you're gonna get with the new build. Now, I get people that come from out of town and they say, I do not want a small 0.15 or 0.20 of an acre. And they have this preconceived notion that uh, new builds or new build communities are super tight. And that's typically because where they live or where they're coming from, new builds, you know, you just stretch out your arms and you're touching two houses. Here, even though it's 0.15 or 0.18 of an acre, you still have 15 feet, 20 feet maybe in between homes. And we go out there and we see new build subdivisions and they're like, you know what, it's really not that bad. There's enough houses or 
enough space in between houses. And something to note too is that some of these communities are just placed right in the middle of kind of like a little forest. So even though you have houses right next to each other, they back up into the woods. So it feels a lot more open. It feels a lot more nature-esque, right? Um, so people that reach out and say, I need a lot of land. Um, I want a big lot. And we go see these houses. It's typically big enough for them. But if you're stuck on a half an acre plus or an acre plus and you want a new build, you're either gonna have to increase your price point and kind of just wait and see when something pops up, or for the most part, we're gonna have to move on and find something that's a little bit older that has the size that you want. So the biggest con for new builds, I would say, is that the lot size is typically a lot smaller than, you know, 0.20 of an acre. Something I just want to mention, kind of a bonus pro, I guess, is that new builds typically uh, appreciate, I would say, a little bit faster, maybe a little bit faster than the other used homes around the area. So when a new build commun community comes in, uh, if you buy one of the first houses, um, by the time the community is done a couple years later, you can actually sell that house for typically, right, depending on the market and so many different factors a lot more than what you initially pay for it. I actually know people that will only buy new build houses. They will buy one of the very few houses in a subdivision that's being built. And by the time it's completed, they sell that house um, at a premium compared to what they paid for it. And they literally do that every couple years and they, they move up in house uh, quality or house price because they're able to do that and scale up very quickly. So, if you know you're thinking about renting or you're like i don't know if i want to buy or if i want to rent if you want to rent typically you're going to be in there for a year or two anyways trying to fill out the area um, if you're able to buy a house and you can afford the payments um, i would say to buy a new build because you can easily stay there for a year or two i would suggest two years because then you don't have to pay uh, capital gains on the uh, interest that you make on the house but uh, stay there two years and then sell the house and kind of move wherever it is that you want um, as opposed to renting and you're just spending money on rent and you're not really um, getting an appreciation for a house that you would have bought anyways. So kind of a bonus pro is that new builds appreciate um, rather quickly and it's a good again stepping stone to get in, in the area and then stay there for a couple years and then sell and move on to wherever it is that you find that you love or any other houses that you like in the area. Now let's discuss prices for new builds that you will find in the area. I'm gonna split it up into two categories. I'm gonna split it up to like closer to downtown and kind of the suburbs around downtown, uh, just because the type of homes and the prices of homes are typically uh, a lot different in those areas. So if we're looking at downtown new construction home prices, the median price point is 610,000 or the average price point is $650,000. Now, what are you going to find or what kind of houses are you going to find in the downtown area? Typically, it's going to be condos or it's going to be townhomes that you will find in this area. And I'm talking about, you know, St. Elmo, uh, Southside, uh, North Shore, North Chattanooga. For the most part, that's kind of the little bubble that I'm going to describe as uh, downtown uh, new construction. So you will find one, maybe two, maybe three uh, single family homes, but this is going to be on the far north of a million dollars or 800 or a million plus uh, for single family homes. Typically what you're going to find around 610 or 650 is uh, condos or uh, townhomes in the area. Now, if we look at kind of 15 to 30-ish minutes from downtown, we're talking about places like uh, Hickson or Saudi Daisy, Harrison, Udua, East Brainerd, uh, Appison has a lot of new builds as well. If we're talking about kind of the general outside area of the greater Chattanooga area, we're gonna see the median price point of 489,000 or the average price point of $525,000. Now, what we're gonna see or the types of homes that we're gonna see in these areas are single family houses. Um, we might 
might see a couple of townhomes and they will be cheaper than the average or the median price point. But for the most part, almost all of them are going to be single family homes. So the main differences between the downtown area and around Chattanooga area is the type of homes and the price point. Uh, downtown is going to be smaller right so one bedroom uh, maybe two bedroom condos or townhomes and around Chattanooga area you're gonna see four five maybe six bedroom six bedroom uh, new construction homes for a hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollars cheaper on average so depending on your price point and depending on what you're looking for downtime may work for you if you want to be in that city center living walkability being close to things or if you want to be more in the suburb more in nature closer to trails and mountain biking all these different things um, you know all the areas I've already discussed might be a better option for you Well guys, that's today's video. I hope I was able to answer a lot of your questions about new builds and new construction and give you something to think about if you're thinking about moving to Chattanooga. Again, please feel free to reach out to me. I love it when you guys reach out to me, ask any questions. I love helping you guys move to Chattanooga. Reach out to me on the number on your screen. Uh, give me a call, shoot me a text, or find me on social media and send me a message there. Until next time, take care and God bless.